You are a man behind so many, you know, really big deals. Um, one of which, and just segueing from your role at Bad Boy to Revolt, um, talk to me about how Revolt came to be and the relationship with Comcast. Very interesting. So, um, Revolt actually, the idea of doing a cable network really came from uh, Sean's massive success that he had with the um, Making the Band brand on MTV and all of his TV shows. Um, so at one point, he was the highest paid producer of MTV VH1 shows. And you know, very, the way, um, the way Sean tends to look at everything, he's like, if they're paying me this much, how much are they making, <laughs> right? Uh, and we started thinking about the idea of what it would take to actually start a cable network. Uh, the first plan we put together actually, actually was right before the big market crash. And that was a plan um, which um, we he had several partners and uh, devised a whole business plan, a whole uh, reel around what the channel would be, went and pitched it to Comcast. We're ha we were having really good meetings. Uh, and then the market just crashed and everybody, um, you know, everybody just did nothing, right? They just waited to see what was going to happen. Uh, but a couple of years later, uh, Comcast uh, bought uh, NBC Universal, uh, and in that acquisition, they were mandated by Congress to add more minority-owned channels to the okay. network. So we caught wind of that, and we decided to uh, really enter into a bake-off. This was like everybody in the world was in this bake off from Bob Johnson to Bill Cosby to everybody in TV world was in this bake off. Uh, we entered into this bake off. And this is one of those cases where we literally uh, we hired Andy Schoen, mm -hmm. uh, who was one of the early um, producers at MTV. Uh, and he had a good relationship with Sean. And we literally um, took first, you know, sat with Puff and got his vision which was like 20 pages of vision about what he wanted it to be. And he basically said, I want to bring back the old school music channel. Like, I think it's time now. We've corrected enough, and it's time to have, like, MTV. At that time, MTV was not playing any music. Mm -hmm. It's time to have music on TV again. A uh, lot of people objecting to it. No way. Music is digital now. That's never going to work. He persisted with his vision. Uh, and then we just laid out a game plan. So this was, again, something where you, you literally laid out step by step what's the channel going to be, what are the shows going to be, what are the economics going to look like. Uh, we went and pitched Comcast. We were actually the last group to pitch. And we were one out of like about 80 groups. We were one of two groups picked uh, by Comcast uh, wow. to be added to the Comcast network. And from there, we added Time Warner and we added other distribution as well. You know, I, I want to bring something to life because y you, you again reiterate the planning and really doing the due diligence behind the scenes before you ever even make the pitch, before any idea comes to life. And I think it's important for people who are in the audience and also people who are going to be watching this um, online to understand you, anybody can have a great idea. You know, everybody has a great idea, but the ideas that tend to make it and have longevity and win ultimately are the ones that while you're sleeping, we are planning, we are trying to poke holes in these ideas and we are strategizing so that when we do pitch it, we're bulletproof pretty much. Would you say? Absolutely. I think. Um I'm going, to, I'm going to butcher this quote, but uh, <laughs> Diddy has a quote which is something like, close your eyes and dream, and then wake up, then wake up, open your eyes, and see, mm -hmm. right? So a dream without a plan is just a dream, and that's like the mantra. You got to have the dream and the vision, and that's great, and there's some people that have that, you know, have that gift, and, and Sean Combs is one of those people, but then you have to have the plan to execute it, and I think a lot of people just think, I have this dream, and I'm going to make it work, and I'm just going to be, I'm going to work, work hard and make it work, but you don't have the plan. You haven't assessed the landscape. I, I think to really simplify business, it's kind of, I, I, I like to try to break it down to a lemonade stand mentality. I got five lemonade stands in a neighborhood. What's going to make mine stand out? Why does mine need to exist? Right? Am I going to be lower price? 
Am I going to have better flavors? Am I going to be in a better location? Like, why do I need to exist? So when you're starting a business, if you, you have to start with that premise. What, what am I fulfilling? What am I filling here that's a void? What's the white space? And how am I going to be better than other people in that space? And that sometimes is a very long process. And you really want to know the landscape as it is now and what it will be in the coming future. So sometimes it's not even your current competition, but it's your, your competition that's coming that's not even there yet that you really need to understand. So uh, yeah, there's no way to dream without a plan um, because you'll, you'll fail. What's up guys? Thanks for sticking with me to the end of the video. Truly appreciate you. If you like anything you heard here today, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And if you know anybody that can benefit from this message, feel free to share. Peace and love.